Hi, everyone. This is Mike Wilkerson, founder of Stormwall Advisors, and this is the December 2022 monthly update from Stormwall Advisors, where we talk about markets and the economy and things that are going on in the world that could affect you, your business, or otherwise. Um, I'm going to share my screen here and go through some of this, hopefully fairly quickly. Um, again, first first week of December here, and just getting this out. It's also available uh, at stormwalladvisors.com if you want to learn more or get a copy of this uh, of this presentation. Um, check it out there at stormwalladvisors.com. So, talking today, I want to go through a few things. One, uh, an update on inflation. Uh, see where we are and where we've been uh, over the last. Uh, several months, talk a little bit about macro and uh, the market trends as we see them. Big news in December was the collapse of the crypto exchange FTX. And so we're going to talk about that and the contagion uh, that's occurring in the crypto space around it. And then we'll wrap up with some forward looking thoughts for the month of December. So it is pretty clear that uh, the US and Europe are both facing persistent inflation. It's really driven by energy prices. You'll see that as we go through it. We did get a bit of relief um, last month where October's 7.7% uh, CPI reading was lower than it had been in the last uh, seven months. Uh, before that, we were basically at eight, uh, really at seven or eight months above 8%. 7.7 still in that range. We'll come back to whether that means uh, much at all. So if you look at what was driving it, uh, it's clearly the price of energy, specifically fuel oils, uh, utility gas, electricity, all uh, up, uh, quite a bit. Energy overall, 17.6%. Um, and it translates into transportation costs as well. Gasoline year over year up 17.5%. And then food at home, 12%. And that's where consumers are feeling it the most. Um, I wrote uh, recently an article called The Incredible Shrinking American Wall. Let me see if we move this uh, so you can see it. And I pointed out there that even with the 7.7% uh, slightly more favorable CPI number, that is on top of 6.2% inflation uh, in the previous year. And that's called the base effect. When you start from a higher level, then uh, you're going to get compounding. So really, over the last two years, Americans have lost nearly 15% of their purchasing power as a result of this uh, inflation, CPI inflation, which may uh, underestimate the actual cost of living that people are, are, are experiencing. And as a result, Americans are, are uh, piling in on their credit card debt. So aggregate credit card balances as of last month are now $925 billion. That's 15% up uh, year over year. It's the largest increase in, in two decades, nearly $1 trillion of credit card uh, debt, which I think um, spells trouble ahead. We're seeing delinquencies for credit cards and autos beginning to rise uh, and if you look back at the global financial crisis, what happened was those delinqu delinquencies tended to delay, um, tended to lag behind the recessions by a couple of years. So we may be in the very early stages of recession, the very early stages of uh, the effects that we may not see for a couple of years. At the same time, Americans are depleting their personal savings accounts. So historically, uh, the U.S. has averaged 9% of disposable uh, income. Uh, this has now fallen to 2.3%, which is the lowest level that we've seen since uh, 2005, which is the lowest all-time record. Uh, that was at a time, of course, where the economy seemed to be booming. People were putting their savings into housing and other things. We're in a bit of a different environment today. One telling sign is that consumer confidence is uh, falling uh, as these inflation expectations uh, hit, and they're now uh, at their highest level since, uh, since July. So let's move on. So European inflation actually getting it much worse. So if you look at the U.S. again, 7.7%, um, euro area, 11%. And this is really, again, being driven by energy. We see this, uh, take a look at the Netherlands all the way on the far right side of the screen here, 16.8% year over year inflation through October. Italy, Belgium, 12, 13%. Germany, almost 12%. And France, uh, relatively modest, uh, modest 7%. So pretty bad. What's driving it in Europe is the same thing that's driving it here, which is energy. So up 42% year over year. Uh, and then food up 15%. So definitely worse off in uh, in Europe than we're experiencing here. Uh, pretty tough conditions all around. Maybe just turn to uh, macro conditions and the market. So we're seeing some pretty mixed fundamentals. GDP was up in the quarter versus a negative uh, in the first and second quarter. So this technically ends the technical recession. Employment is a bit mixed. Pay payroll was up. Uh, unemployment steady at 3.7. 
consumer confidence is down, down three months in a row, uh, which again is a bit of a forward looking warning sign, uh, as is the Chicago um, Purchasing Managers Index down again a couple of months, lowest level since uh, May of 2020, but down hugely uh, in November at 37.2, down a uh, full eight points from October. And then personal income and expenditure PC kind of growing uh, it, with mixed signals where expenditure is growing greater than income. Big news is the energy markets. This is where a lot of this is coming from. Um, interesting to see that so far this year, the Northern Hemisphere has more snow uh, than ever recorded in the fourth quarter. Um, so this has a couple of impacts. Signals the likelihood of a persistently cold winter when there's big snowpack early. Uh, that's usually the result. And this, of course, creates greater risk to the power grids. Here in the U.S., uh, we talked last month about diesel prices and supply constraints. They are easing uh, from last month, although the cost of fuel oils and utility gas, as we saw earlier, up 68 percent and 20 percent respectively. So this is really what's driving a lot of the inflation and costs for American families. Um, and still, you know, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at a 40 year low. And our refinery capacity is at our lowest level since 2014. So these are the issues that are uh, pressing um, our uh, cost of fuel, gas, diesel at the pump. Europe, we said energy prices up over 40%. This is really what's driving the double digit inflation. It is clear that the sanctions on Russian oil and gas are distorting um, the energy markets, um, leading to supply chain jams and reprisals um, and all sorts of unintended consequences and knock on effects. Uh, one of which is that Germany now has the highest cost of electricity uh, in the world at. Um, at 44 uh, cents per US dollar cents per kilowatt hour versus 16 cents here in the US and 14 cents uh, around the world. So as we come to the end of the year, we're seeing a bit of a, of a mix here and that we've seen a lot of commodity prices come down from their highs. So 2022 marked uh, cyclical highs for all sorts of commodities, oil, copper, wheat, uh, and even the U.S. dollar as inflation ran, as interest rates were going up here in the U.S., dollar hit uh, its all-time high. Uh, all these prices have come down a bit. We're going to end up being sort of flat to slightly down across a number of categories. Um, and we're seeing uh, in oil sort of bounce around a bit, but the industrial commodities like copper coming down pretty significantly year to uh, year to date. And for the equity markets, uh, since September, we've had a bit of a mini uh, mini bull run. Uh, the Dow up 20%, S&P up 14%, uh, tech-heavy NASDAQ less so, along with the Russell. Um, year to date, still going to be uh, down, but it's leading to a lot of questions of have we seen the bottom? Are we getting near? I pointed out last time that for me, it's still difficult to say because valuations remain high with the S&P uh, still trading at uh, relatively high earnings of 28, 29 times earnings versus uh, typical numbers around 23 times since 1980 for the median PE. So still quite expensive. What gives me some discomfort uh, are the housing markets. So the stats are showing that we've got underlying economic stress. Home builder confidence is now at the lowest level in a decade. Housing starts have been falling for six months. If you look at the data over here, the stats over here on the on the right side of the screen, volumes are down, sales volume, unit volumes are down 30%, new listings down 24%, and days on the market up 67%. So quite a negative picture uh, coming out of last month's data. I think if you look at what's going on, I mean, the interest rates are clearly part of it, up 4% uh, year over year, or, year, or excuse me, up 4% this year. This, if you think about the median home price of $400,000 in the U.S., all else equal equates to an additional $16,000 in annual cost. Um, that and just affordability generally is placing a lot of homes out of reach. So home prices are up 40% uh, since the uh, beginning of pandemic lockdowns and uh, families' uh, newfound love for their home and, and being, being there to work, play, school, everything else. At the same time, inflation is driving the cost of lumber, cost of cement, labor. These are all up double digits year over year. And uh, I talked about last time that institutional buyers are crowding out homeowners now representing somewhere between 17 and 20 percent of the market, depending on the month and declining consumer confidence in face of the inflation and layoffs. So to me, this is pretty clear. Housing market is sending a pretty strong signal of recession in 2023. Turning uh, to a different topic, one of the biggest pieces of news in November 
uh, of 2022 was the collapse of the crypto exchange FTX. Its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, um, uh, apparently has used customer deposits that were deposited in FTX, moved them to a sister company, Alameda Research, to cover trading losses in that account uh, and in the accounts of others where they had um, acquired uh, other collapsing crypto uh, entities earlier in the year. The result of this has been pretty bleak for the sector. So token prices are down. Bitcoin and Ether were down 20, 25% when this news came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Solana, level one alternative network uh, prices collapsed as they were pretty linked in with FTX and their network uh, was having problems and withdrawal stopped. The big effect, I mean, this was terrible. This is one of those large, uh, largest frauds that we're going to see. Bernie Madoff was around 18 billion. Uh, you know, we've seen things like Enron, WorldCom, Theranos. This is at that level, pretty significant. For the moment, the contagion, which is broad, is limited to the crypto space. But within crypto, we've seen depositor runs at, at other exchanges where other people fear the same kind of liquidity issues. Uh, Gemini lost uh, half of a trillion dollars, 400 billion, 500 billion in just over 24 hours. Several platforms have halted their depositors withdrawals altogether, at least for several days. Uh, BlockFi, another crypto platform, uh, filed for bankruptcy, as did FTX earlier. And Coinbase, the largest U.S. listed exchange, um, is saw its share prices collapse and its unsecured bonds currently trading at around 50 cents of par, of par uh, meaning that there is some you know ongoing suspicion and distress about the the breadth and depth of this issue uh, and just in the last couple of days uh circle the uh the maker or the of the, uh, the issuer of uh, of us uh, dc uh its merger with a SPAC sponsored by uh financier Bob Diamond was called off uh, just around the uncertainty and sort of lack of investor enthusiasm here so this is a it's pretty significant and it's impacting all sorts of, of of other issues regulators are licking their chops they see this as an opportunity to um use FTX as an excuse to uh make bigger bolder moves sooner in terms of regulation and uh, even though the industry is encouraging regulation, they're hoping for benign regulation, not the kind of draconian uh, ideas that are being put forward by people like Senator Elizabeth Warren and others. So let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. It's been an absolute uh, terrible year. And if you look at where prices have gone um, over uh, the course from their all time high, which for most of these folks were uh, towards in the fourth quarter of last year, about a year ago. The S&P down from January highs by 15% after this recovery we talked about the last two months. Bitcoin and Ethereum both down uh, 70, 75%. Other altcoins down 90%. It begs the question, is this uh, on, on the race to zero or does this mark um, the bottom? You know, One piece of positive news is that Ethereum posts its merge merger and move to proof of stake is now technically deflationary. It is hard money in that. Uh, the network is burning more coins than it is creating, um, which is positive for one of the main attributes of, of, of crypto, which is its anti-inflationary or inflation-resistant properties. Similarly, Bitcoin now is below 2% inflation, will eventually go to zero mechanically over the course uh, of the next several years. I've talked before about um, the long-term risks. We see it failure to adopt the consumers um, don't get it, and they still don't get it today. It's still a highly technical product. Uh, narrowly used uh, and narrowly invested in. That's going to have to change for crypto to really survive longer term. The regulatory interference we've alluded to, this is probably the biggest immediate risk of crypto really breaking out. And then unforeseen technical innovation as something comes along that we don't understand and don't see yet uh, that may uh, that may change the, the rules of the game here for, for the crypto industry. Just to wrap up, um, some thoughts for December as I, as I move my floating head here one more time. It is clearly going to be energy and food markets that will dominate the news, dominate economic performance, dominate the inflation stats. We do have some signs, let's hope, that the bear market has returned. Uh, excuse me, the, not, no, sorry, not, this is not what I was going to say. Signs that the bear market has returned to Wall Street is not something we should hope for. Um, uh, but that uh, we, what I was going to say is that we've seen a market bottom for equities and crypto uh, coming in at some point in this quarter or the next. That's what we're hoping for. Although the tough news around that is deteriorating economic conditions. So we're seeing, uh, and we talked about a few of them today, some indications that uh, inflation, inflation is continuing, that uh, the economic outlook uh, continues to 
uh, look like uh, recession and and the, and the likelihood of it. And most troublingly, we do see this dangerous escalation of the war in Ukraine um, with you know this tit for tat ratchet, ratcheting up of retaliatory moves um, with recently in the last few days, uh, Ukrainian drones apparently striking air bases, three air bases as of today uh, within uh, within Russia. So uh, we'll we'll see where this goes. I am going to say one more thing, just as a reminder, you can learn more at stormwalladvisors.com. Uh, Reach us uh, by email if you want a copy of this uh, PowerPoint presentation, physical presentation, or uh, to uh, ask any other questions or come along. Let me close this out and I'll come back to, uh, to just say, um, Tough month. I think we're still not out of the woods. A lot of economic issues that are coming to a fore in this quarter. And we'll see where the labor market goes and where the economy heads. So um, for those uh, clients and friends who are watching, thank you for uh, for your support. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, again, reach out if uh, we can do anything uh, in the meantime. And I wish everyone the best of a December, the best holiday season, uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see you back here on this format on YouTube uh, in early January. Again, if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like it, to share it, to subscribe on my YouTube channel, Michael Wilkerson. Uh, at Stormwall, uh, where uh, we can get the word out to a broader audience. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time.